Hello everybody, and welcome back. As I'm sure a lot of you may know, the other day the ExoMars Scaparelli lander landed on Mars. And by landed, I mean it m most probably, um, you know, landed very, very hard. It pretty much crashed, actually. Um, <laughs> now, it isn't a terribly, you know, a complete loss. Um, Scaparelli was actually more a demonstration lander than it was, like, an actual scientific lander. Like, it had scientific instruments on it, but it was more so about testing the landing um, technology for a future ExoMars rover. So, it sucks, but it isn't, like, the end of the world. Plus, uh, Mars has a very bad habit of um, destroying spacecraft, so it's a tough planet. Because <laughs> it has just enough atmosphere that you need to worry about, but not enough to really help you, so it's it's a real pain in the ass. Anyways, right here I have a uh, my own little mock-up of, of Scaparelli. I'm currently time warping through this just to save time. And I'm going to try to land it more or less the way it's supposed to. Um, so we're coming in. I'm going to hold off deploying the parachute for a little bit because it's slowing down much faster than I wanted it to. I probably should have made its actual like entry speed higher, so it's a little more a little more realistic, but whatever, I guess I'm dumb. Anyways, so um what ExoMars, the whole mission itself is aiming to do is more or less to look for life. Um like the the orbiter that like the mothership that was with it was the Trace Gas Orbiter, which is currently gonna be looking for uh methane and to pinpoint exactly where it's coming from on Mars' surface to see if it's, you know, life or geologic. It's fascinating. And uh Scaparelli was a test bed to test some technologies for uh for landing on uh, a vehicle on Mars, and it, yeah, it didn't go perfectly as well. Uh, from what they can determine, what happened um, was it, it detached from the parachute too early, and the engines didn't burn for long enough. Like, the engines were supposed to burn for 30 seconds, but it seems they only burned for like 3, or something like that, or 6 seconds and 60, I forget which one it is, and it was a real unfortunate turn of events. I was actually watching the live stream, and uh, uh, I've watched a number of live streams from like NASA and ESA, and uh, you can generally tell when things are going well and when things are going wrong. And in this case, like after the you know estimated time of arrival had come and gone, I noticed a lot of the uh, the mission controllers, especially the German ones, <laughs> were not looking terribly happy, and everyone's smile started slowly disappearing. So I figured, yeah, something's something's not right there, and. Uh, yeah, it, they, they lost contact with it. So, uh, you know, space isn't easy. It, it really isn't. Especially in Mars is itself not easy at all. It's a very difficult planet. You know, maybe I should change this up so that I'm coming in faster than what I'm doing right now. Actually, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. But at any rate, um, what Scapper was supposed to do was burn its engines and come down to a very, oh, to like a near stop right above the surface, and then it was going to cut its engines and not do that. <laughs> and then it was supposed to cut its engines and plop down on the surface. In this case, I screwed it up, and um, now I'm flying away. So, uh, we're going to redo this now. Right then. Uh, I probably should have used, like, the other decoupler, or not the two-way decoupler, but, um, I always use the uh, the bolt, like the two-sided decoupler for for these kind of things. Just you know, extra assurances that you know it's going to deploy. Also, when I'm using the other de um, decoupler, when I when I deploy the uh, um, the heat shield, it would just stay stuck in there, and it was I don't know, it was causing it was causing it was having issues playing nice with the shroud. Is pretty much what was going on here. So, uh, meh, whatever. Uh, I'll. Uh, well, actually, yeah, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But anyways, yes, so, um, Scaparelli didn't, didn't seem to behave like it was supposed to, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. And it's also kind of unfortunate as well, because, uh, Juno went into safe mode during a close approach of Jupiter, uh, the, the other day as well. And, uh, that's never a good thing. There we go. Uh, because it appears that... Like, 
in that case, it was a computer glitch, and, and like, it isn't that that isn't as big of a deal because you know going into safe mode just means the spacecraft is protecting itself. So, like, it's not a terrible, terrible, terrible thing. I'm actually gonna do throttling, even though it's not supposed to. It wasn't. Skyp really wasn't really supposed to throttle, um, to my knowledge. But I'm gonna throttle just to make this more better. And then I'm gonna come down and then cut engines, and I'm way too high, but we'll see if it works anyways. More or less. Um, eh, kind of. But with the actual Scaparelli lander, what it did was it had a crushable underside. So it was kind of able to do that, but not actually. So we're going to try that again. Right then, this time I've actually increased the speed by... Well, actually, I kind of cheated. I just increased Duna's gravity for a little bit to speed things up. And then uh, from there, I'm now back to normal Duna gravity. But... <laughs> I'm not terribly good at this, it seems. My Scaparelli wannabe. But no, it's a lot of it is just trial and error. Um, and, well, I think one of the, one good example is the uh, the Soviet Mars programs back in the day, which were a lot of just trial and error. Because um, like, frequently, like, a lot of their probes would go to Mars, and they'd either lose contact on the way, uh, they'd blow up on the pad, or they would lose contact around Mars. And even like the first successful landing, which was I think Mars 2 or Mars 3, I mind wants to say 2, but I'm thinking 3, um, it landed and only, you know, sent back data for about um, 17 seconds and then turned off and they never heard from it again. And same with like uh, the Luna program, actually all of the moon programs, uh, you, Soviet Union and United States, they had a lot of failures, but a lot of you know, successes as well. Actually, it's interesting, because some of the later Luna missions to the moon, uh, they used airbags to slow their um, their landing on the, on the surface of the moon, which, interesting idea, I don't know why they don't do it anymore. Come on, detach. Oh, wait, I'm using the wrong button, that's why. Haha, -ha. I'm good at this. And then, of course, uh, Spirit and Opportunity both used airbags to uh, to do their thing. So, like, you know, there are ways to do it. There's also way there's ways to do it cheaply and ways to do it expensively. Uh, the airbags were fa were seen as a way to um, get to Mars cheaply and easily without having to do a very expensive mission. Like uh, before that, you had like, like you had like Viking, for example, which. Uh, Yay! Uh, you had Viking, for example, which was um, well. It was like a, it was kind of like Scaparelli, where it it, it detached from uh, the the mothership, and then it entered the atmosphere, detached from the heat shield, and then did a powered descent. And in this case, well, in that case, it had landing pads. Scaparelli doesn't have landing pads; it had just a crushable underside. So, uh, more or less, kind of like that. Oh, look, there's, there's the parachute coming down. Yeah, trying to get the uh, the parachute, or the parachute, the shroud, and the heat shield all play nice together was actually not t very easy. It's not going to land on my lander, is it? Well, let's find out, actually. Nope, we're good. <laughs> but yeah, so Mars isn't isn't easy. It isn't an easy planet to, to land on to get to. Well, it's not terribly hard to get to, but it is difficult to, uh, to land on, because again, the atmosphere is just thick enough that it's you can't ignore it but it's not thick enough to really help you in any serious way like they have supersonic parachutes but you know uh, so yeah that, that was what I want to talk about with Scaparelli and my little demonstration lander here which I tried to make kind of you know Scaparelli-esque it has the right, 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 it has this right amount of engines and their everything but other than that I had to take creative liberties I really wish KSP would add like Crush like like springs, crushable um, structures, and airbags. Cause seriously, that'd be a lot of fun. Very mods for it, but I don't like using mods. I don't know why. I just don't. Anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, check out my other videos. I'll be back with more space engine eventually. Maybe even tonight. I don't know. We'll see. And uh, ooh, I have to, actually I, I need to do a space engine because I have an update. It's really cool. So thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And space.